and welcome to this exciting preview of my new app MIDI Step, an aleatoric step sequencer. MIDI Step is a very powerful and inspirational polyphonic step sequencer and a dream for lovers of complex rhythms and generative creation tools. The program features sophisticated user control randomizations to generate just about every aspect of the program. But more on this later. Features include per step polyphonic playback, variable sequence length for all parameters such as pitch, octave, note duration, gate and so on. And we also have a sophisticated pattern sequencer which allows you to chain together patterns in any order. And these patterns can be played back in sync with your DAW or you can trigger them remotely using MIDI note information. Sequences can also be transposed in real time using chord input from your favorite DAW. So let's take a closer look. So let's start off by creating a pattern where various uh, sequence uh, parameters have different pattern lengths, uh, very much akin to a polymeter. And it's extremely easy to do in MIDI step and we can create some uh, fascinating sequences that just meander on forever. Now, key thing to note here is that the pattern length bar is at the top of the interface and has its own uh, master length knob. Now MIDI step has three lanes, a note lane at the top, an octave lane in the middle and a parameter lane at the bottom. So let's start the transport and see how all these lanes work together. So currently the pattern length is set to 16, the master pattern length, and every note is just playing the same note, C3. But if we random some notes, it gets a little bit more interesting. Now currently the scale is set to chromatic, so we're not following a scale as such. So what I'm going to do is set the C major scale and uh, randomize some new notes. So every time I press the dice button in the notes lane, I'll get a new randomized set of notes. But these notes aren't brilliant, so I'm going to long press that button and I'm going to adjust the range uh, that I want to use to allocate the notes. I can also reduce the probability so that when I press this button most of the notes stay on route and only a 20 odd percent of them will jump somewhere else but in this case I'm going to move the range of notes down and put the probability up a little bit and we get something more desirable then. Now since this is plodding on a little bit we'll increase the speed to 1 8 notes. Now at any time we can use the master knob to change the actual length of the pattern and when we do this it will change the length of all the other lanes. Now to create something technically interesting we're best off having the master length set a little bit bigger uh, so if I adjust the master length and then take down the actual length of the notes lane and I'm going to set it at something odd like nine notes. And I'm going to enable this button which uh, causes the uh, note lane to rewind when the pattern finishes. And that helps stop the pattern sound too random. It gives us a sense of something repeating itself. Now let's press the randomize button in the octave lane. So now we have a polymeter sequence that sounds quite good and a recognizable pattern. So let's randomize some velocity on the velocity lane. Now because the random velocity button didn't uh, give me a, a, a big enough range, I'm going to long press on the little dice button and change that range so we can uh, get more varied velocities. OK, 
Okay, the play cursor's moving from left to right, and to add a little bit more variety, I'm going to enable the jump feature. I'm liking the feel of that. So let's take a look at this parameter bar here and see the other things we can change, uh, including divider. Now this splits each note into a number of subnotes, and if I turn on the random jump on this, uh, we should get quite a bit of variety added. Okay, so there's a simple example of how we can create a pattern and how all three lanes can work together. And notice that bottom uh, bar there that allows us to change other things like uh, gate and repeat and swing. Now you'll also notice on the right of the parameter bar we can select the modulation uh, option and we have eight lanes of modulation we can set up here to control parameters of your favorite synth. And again, each one of these has an independent length, the same randomize and uh, random jump and uh, cursor to home features as the other lanes. Now to get control of scent from MIDI step, we need to enable it by pressing this button on the right here. Now at the bottom here, we can set the CC controller that we want to send. Uh, by clicking the up and down buttons uh, or we could just double tap on this and display a list of uh, available CC's that we can assign. So that's very useful if you don't know the controller number but we also have uh, learn and ping buttons down the bottom here but we're not going to go over that today. Now each of these eight mod lanes can have their own speed assigned so possibly if you're sending mod you might want to send a little bit faster. And if we start the actual uh, play controls going now, you'll see it's on jump at the minute, but if I turn that off, you'll see it progressing in sixteenths across that uh, uh, timeline there. Now, obviously, it's not uh, easy to remember what you've assigned to each of these, so you could rename uh, these from mod to something more familiar. Uh, in this case, I'm just going to rename it cutoff, and you'll see it's reflected both in the selection bar and to the left of that mod lane. Now, up until now, I've shown you how to do the randomization per lane, but there's a, an actual randomization button up on the main menu, which can randomize all the parameters at once. And if we long press on this button, we get a randomization dialog that pops up, and it allows us to actually customize uh, each of the lanes in turn. So all of the lanes are here, and it's down to you to enable which parts you want to randomly generate, including the modulation, which is disabled by default. Now, you can uh, set up and customize this how you like, and these settings are saved uh, along with all your patterns as part of a saved preset. So let's take things up a notch with this second example. Now I want you to notice that we're using Helium to uh, generate a chord sequence which is not only going to other instruments, it's all been also been piped into MIDI step to control the transposition of this uh, one note pattern sequence. So you can use the transpose button to actually tell the sequence whether to be transposed by incoming MIDI or not. Now this pattern relies heavily on making changes to this top bar here, this row of buttons. Some are on, some are off, some are set to ties. Now if we simply press on the first of those buttons, you'll see that it toggles that button on and off. But if we long press the button, we get um, a menu pop up with a number of options, including randomize. And you'll see that a little dice now appears in that column saying that that will be randomized. 
And those randomized options I showed you before are used during that randomization. So we can limit what is being randomized in that particular column. This is very, very useful as you have a great deal of control over that individual column. So let me initialize this sequence and go through a few things with you. So now we've just got a single uh, note, which is the root note C3. And if we play back the sequence, you will hear one note per beat. Now, if I long press in that second column, I can pick tie. And if we listen, what that does is that creates a tied note, extends that first note to two beats. And there you could hear the power of just turning off a single note. Now if I zoom in a bit and you focus on my uh, mouse pointer, as I touch and drag across this, you'll see that uh, it allows you to perform sweeps across the lane to add notes. And if I long press and uh, set that column to column five to a random, I can simply press in that column and drag to the right uh, which then propagates at random across several uh, notes. Now let's take a look at something a little bit more exciting. The possibility to add not just a note to an event, but actually a chord. Take a listen to this example. So hopefully you could hear what was happening there. You could see that uh, MIDI step was actually controlling pure piano and another app uh, generating the organ type sounds. And uh, the a single note input was uh, actually transposing that. So let's initialize this sequence and show you how I achieved this. Now this chord editor button here allows us to toggle between the octave lane and the actual chord editor, which appears directly under the notes. So it's easy to uh, examine the chords that are tied to the note columns. Now I can either tap on this master bar at the top here or the bar just above the chord editor to select a particular column. Now if I randomize uh, a few notes in that particular column and work my way through the columns by clicking on that uh, bar to change between one two three four notice this root note that's on the chord editor changes as i tap uh, across the uh, columns so this root note in column one is actually on c3 and you can set that using the root key and root octave buttons now notice as i slide up the little fader on uh, on column one that that root note moves and the root note is signified by the actual note and midi note number now I've just selected a major scale uh, which i'm going to use to add chords uh, and the way you do this is to uh, simply tap on the actual notes within this little chord editor below then i can switch to column two and add a new chord on there if i wish now it's very important to note you cannot actually remove the root note so you're adding additional notes and those notes are saved as offsets from that root note and when you change the scale uh, these change to uh, to conform to the scale now fast forward a little and i've created a little sequence that shows you the combination of both notes and chords so let's take a listen to that So hopefully that was simple enough for you to be able to pick out which were the chords and which were the notes. Now I've got another little sequence here that demonstrates how random works uh, using chords. So take a listen. So 
So let's change the first column to random. Now you can hear MIDI step adding additional random notes and that depends on the complexity setting. Now I'm currently changing the complexity of uh, the first column and the higher we set the complexity the more notes are generated. Now if I tap in the chord editor and add additional notes to that root note then it will only add additional notes to get up to the complexity. So by assigning notes to generate a chord and setting the complexity slightly higher it will uh, add incidental notes. Now if I ensure that uh, column 4 has two notes and the complexity is two you'll hear that on lane 4 it doesn't add any additional notes. But if I up the complexity by one, it will add one random additional note each time it hits column four. Now if we were to add more notes to the chord than the complexity setting, uh, the randomized function will start randomly deleting notes to get to the complexity. So you can give it, a, you can be a guide and give it all the notes that it could possibly choose from. Now you may have noticed there's a whole bunch of step option knobs on the right of the screen here, and all of those um, relate to the selected vertical note column. Now I'm going to set the note step value for columns one and four to two, and what you'll hear is that every second revolution of this notes lane a note would be skipped So I hope you could pick out those uh, skip notes. Uh, also next to the note skip is a probability. So I'm going to select column 5 and uh, set the probability on column 5 to 50%. So now roughly 50% of the time uh, note 5 will be dropped. Let's look at how we can extend a pattern by using additional patterns tied together. Now you can have up to 16 of these patterns which uh, can be joined together in any order. And a pattern can be told to play more than once. So here is the pattern panel and you can see that pattern 1 is selected. If we tap on pattern 2, 3 and 4 you see that they're all different, different pattern lengths and probably different speeds as well. Now a pattern will loop over and over again unless we tell it to do something different. And we can do that using this next option. We can tell it to advance to the next available pattern, which is two. Or we can pick a random pattern or we can name a pattern to go to uh, when this pattern is complete. So with pattern one selected, let's take a listen.
Now we have the possibility to chain multiple patterns together and create a song out of that. I can go to any pattern I want just by tapping on that pattern number. But the minute I press the host transport rewind button, we'll go back to the first valid pattern. Now if you don't want that functionality, you can go into settings and turn that off. Now pressing rewind on the host transport will just home the cursor in the pattern. Now watch what happens when we play pattern 3. Notice that it automatically went to pattern 4 because it's set to advanced. But if we enable the pause button here, It will still keep on playing when it hits the end of the pattern, but it will just loop back to the beginning again. And this is perfect for when you wanted to make changes to a particular pattern and you do not want the sequence to play. Now I've hardly scratched the surface of what we can do with MIDI step, but uh, one thing probably that I should show you before we leave this preview is uh, the way we can control this using keyboard input. We saw this in use earlier where we were using Helium to transpose the current pattern. Now I want to introduce key on mode. Because normally when we just press a key on the keyboard, we get no sound because the transport is not running. So the first thing we need to do is an en enable key on mode. And now when we press a key, you'll hear a sound and the sequence will start playing. When you lift the key, the sequence will stop. And notice the play cursors on each of the lanes carries on from where it left off. Um, if you enable this rewind button on each of the lanes, every time we press a key, uh, the play cursors will be honed. Also notice it doesn't matter what key I play, it always plays the same sequence, it's just triggering the sequencer. So if we select the mono mode, you'll see that as I change key, it, everything is transposed with the key I press. Now in mono mode, the sequencer only accepts the last key I pressed. So it doesn't matter how many keys I have pressed, it's the last key that counts. So in order to play multiple notes at the same time or chords, we need to enable polyphonic mode. Now as well as the monophonic and polyphonic modes, we also have three additional ARP modes. Now you can select these from the menu here, so I'm going to select ARP up. And to better hear this, I'm going to actually take all these uh, note sliders down, so we're hearing a root note. So that's ARP up, let's try harp down. And harp up and down. Now let's spice it up a bit. Now, while randomizing notes can work, uh, it's probably best to actually sit there and put octaves and sevenths jumps and stuff like that in, rather than just randomize. But I hope you get the idea and you realize what a useful tool this is. 
So let's finish off this video and not let it drag on too long by showing you a few additional features that I haven't mentioned so far. Now I'm aware I haven't shown you how some of the additional options like uh, repeat, uh, swing and uh, gate, I think I don't think we've covered gate, uh, work. But we're going to go over them in a, a masterclass video uh, once this is released. Now one important thing I think I should mention is that this ships with loads of scales. I mean a, a ton of scales. Um, and all of these are uh, very useful and uh, but they can all be edited by long pressing the scale button and we can actually if we get incidental notes we don't like we can turn them on and off and that will be saved along with your uh, with your preset. Now while the file button on the toolbar allows us to uh, load and also save presets by long pressing uh, we can access all these from the main menu and we also have a preset manager that uh, can be used to uh, organize your presets and even save and create folders. Now one really useful thing is using this clipboard button we've got on the display to actually drag uh, patterns uh, directly into apps like uh, Helium. So I can click, hold and drag uh, from uh, MIDI step my patterns directly into Helium. You can see there it's even expanded all the chords. Uh, simply tap in the, uh, the cut clipboard button will copy the current pattern into the clipboard. And uh, also uh, on the main menu we've got options to uh, export to Helium and once we export the file it ends up in Helium's media bay so if we open the media bay and then uh, click on the clips folder and if you look at down at the bottom there you've got a MIDI step folder and all your uh, exports from MIDI step will appear in here. Now if you wanted to back up any of your own presets you can simply uh, use the files manager just drag the file manager up to the side of the screen uh, open up the well, you can either do do this one of two ways. You can either uh, open the uh, preset manager and just tap hold, tap hold and drag from there uh, into the file manager. And of course, you can import the same way using drag and drop. And we can also do it directly from the pop-up menu or in standalone mode using web transfer. But that's for another video. Now the last thing before I go is uh, I wanted to point out that David Collar has been hard at work yet again on another user manual uh, and if you're ever stuck, if you ever have questions, this is your first port of call because David does a wonderful job explaining in very very basic terminology how these apps work and uh, the last few apps I've released David's been working on the manuals for those uh, and he's done a very very uh, good thorough job on that on that so uh, check out the manuals uh, it covers just about everything that you could possibly want to know so that's just about it for this preview don't forget to thumb up the video uh, subscribe to the channel and I'll be back with more exciting videos once this product is released see you next time